Welcome to Kapu, everyone. My name is Claudio Flores. I represent, represent the Flores case of Hana. One of six petitioners that were in the case of the TNT permit regarding the conservation district use permit for the 30 meter telescope that was being proposed among our care. And I'm going to read this as quickly as possible. This is actually a third year I'm here before the BOT regarding the same matter that we have new trustees, new staff, and so there's a lot, I don't want to cover everything I did before, but it did give us a, a printed testimony, so I don't have to go into detail, but I just wanted to cover the highlights if possible. So just a background, I said we're one of six petitioners we went into a contested case hearing. The contested case hearing was regarding this permit that the TMT project, the 30 meter telescope, was being proposed on Mount Awakia. I have a history of what has transpired since. So right now, where we're at is it's going into the, uh, an appeal at the Third Circuit Court. But before I proceed any further, I really like to and thank and mahalo the board for taking up the resolution and passing it regarding this. And the resolution is attached to the handout I gave to you. And basically the resolution was urging the Board of Land and Natural Resources to exercise the highest possible level of stewardship and to afford the strongest consideration to the rights and practices of Native Hawaiians and sacred sites affected by proposed developments including those on Mauna Kea and the conservation district use application process. Unfortunately, the, the BNR didn't heed or basically ignored the resolution, ignored aspects of protection of native Hawaiian rights and practices. And in essence, as they proceed forward with this permit, it's really in violation of our constitutional protections for native Hawaiians. It's also a violation of our public trust doctrine. It's, this project is going to cause substantial adverse impacts. In many ways, it can be said. And I mean, there's, there's many of now about the 30 meter telescope. And I'm just going to tell it as it is. If it, in order to get a permit to, to construct something in a conservation district, you have, you have to meet eight criteria. There's no way that project can meet the eight criteria. Yet it's been passed through. And we know it's political, there's a lot of politics with it. We know there's a lot of business pushing it. And we know there's a lot of people from outside Hawaii pushing it. There's a lot of money from outside Hawaii pushing this project. I just want to show you one thing, how it cannot meet the, the criteria. I can go, I don't want to go through all of it, but I just want to show you one thing. size of this telescope, it's not like any of the, the telescopes out there. It's over 18 stories tall. We don't even have a building on this island 18 stories tall. We don't even have a building on Kauai 18 stories tall or on Maui. How can you say that's not an impact? The, 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 it's over 18 stories. We have a law in this county of Hawaii that only allows certain buildings in the commercial and resort area in Hilo at 12 stories. The rest of the island, you can't build that tall. How can the, the BNR allow that to happen on the, on the mall? There's something wrong. Just to put perspective how big it is. So we all, we all I give you a reference. We all know what the state capital looks like, right? If you put the TMT next to the state capital, it's almost twice as high as the state capital. And if you go down punch bowl, and you look at it from the punch bowl side, the dome is going to be just as wide as the, as the state capitol. That's what's being proposed on the Mauna. How can that not be substantial and significant? It is. That, that's why you cannot meet the, they cannot meet the permit, but it's being pushed through. <laughs> okay, so that's why as a citizens, this is six, Six petitioners have to go to court now to say 
we were, we're forced to go to court, and in order to go to the third circuit court, we have to retain legal, a legal counsel. We can't just do it on. Prior to this, we were doing all on our own. Out of our own pockets, no, no, no legal attorneys would be doing it on our own. That's why I'm here the, the third year. This is the third time I'm here before the BOT. I'm asking for the same thing again. What I'm, I'm just asking is, as it, it fits in, into the mission statement, it fits into a, the strategic priorities of OHA. What we're asking is, as a role as an advocate for its native Hawaiian be beneficiaries, it's urged that OHA BOT take the following action. Allocation of resources for legal expenses in the efforts to protect cultural resources on Mauna Kea and associated Native Hawaiian cultural rights and practices to be impacted by the proposed Conservation Use District Permit, HA 53568 for the 30 meter telescope of Mauna Kea. That's all I'm asking. I'm asking, we've been asking this for the past two years. When we're in contested case, now we're in, a, we're in the Third Circuit Court, and we have to get a legal counsel. And it costs money to file things. I don't want to come here and beg. I don't, I don't be begging in front of OHA for money. But I did find some, a potential source of money for, you, for this. The potential source of money, and the hand that I gave to you, according to this annual report submitted to the 2013 legislature, and your report on Mauna Kea lands. And you go to the back page of the hand that I gave to you, it's in yellow. The, Monic, the Office of Mauna Kea Management collects and monies for tours that go up to the mountain. And, they've been, and by law, they've been required to put 20% 20, 20 aside, set aside, for OHA. I'm asking you just get, get a fraction of the money to help protect the, what's on the mountain. And in and, and quote from here, and this is from the most recent report that was submitted, an amount of $81,494 was set aside for payment to OHA. The cumulative set aside for OHA is $388,416. Uh, we're going to ask you for a fraction of that to go back to the mountain. That's what the money was collected from the mountain for people going up. I'm going to always ask you for a fraction of that for this thing just to protect what's up there. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to close here quickly. So, so as it goes on, is 20% 20 20 of the fees collected are set aside for eventual payment to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. So, I, I, I saw and the, the director of the Office of Hawaiian Care Management, Ms. Nagata, in the audience, and maybe before she leaves, she can write you a check before she leaves for the $388,000 and, and then we could perhaps proceed with that. But if you read in the bottom, it says eventual payment. So, I'm just saying, here is some money that actually is from the Mauna. Can you please give us just a fraction of it to protect the Mauna? And when do you have to, when do you have to give us a borrow the money somewhere and just get it back from them later? I found money for you and for the other programs here. And it's all, it's all been sitting in the, in, in the somewhere else, it's, it hasn't been in, in, in Omaha. And this is from the this is a report from the UH to the legislature. Okay, so I'm going to close you quickly. He says, "Why should we care what's happening in the mountain?" The basic, you know, we talk about how it's important for taking care of our kino, for those of us out. How it's important to take care of every kanaka. Whether it is from the schools to the pa'ahau. Everybody's important. <laughs> our kanaka important. And so is our land important. Why the mountain is important, not just to us as kanaka, but more so because we're deeply tied in our DNA to this land and to our ancestors who connected to this land, is that the mountain is a people. And, and, the, and for the, there's still kupunas and there's still ancestors and there's still the there's still ancestral beings on the mountain that's still there and hold space on the mountain. And we've been on the mountain a number of times 
and they share many things with us. They share the top of the Mauna, and it's called Mauna Awakea because it's a mountain of Awakea, the mountain of the sky fog. The mountain does not belong to the UH, the mountain does not belong to the TNT Corporation, the mountain doesn't even belong to OHA or us. It belongs to Awakea. And they shared with us is that the Mauna is a pico. It's a sacred pico. They shared that there's, on this island there's two most sacred pico. Of course the whole island is sacred, but they said if there's, there's two sacred pico on this island. The one pico is at the top of the summit. Because a pico is like the pico on top of your head. Where, where, where divine energies and life forces from Keapu and the Creator come into this mauna. Just like the divine Keapu and our Antipodes feed us through this top people. They said that's why the people is sacred. They said the other sacred people is Ahua Ubi. And Ahua Ubi is a people they say to the universe, to the star, to the star of ancestral families, there's a people there. But it said, we as a people, as a Kanaka, we cannot forget what is still important, what is sacred to us. Just like our people on top of our pole, we must not forget the people up there. Even though there's been destruction on top of the mountain, it's still important. Because this project is going to push things way over, beyond the capacity that those on the mountain can handle. And, then, and there's another picture I'm going to show you. It's a pico. And this is actually, a, this occurred in 2011, when a contested case was happening. They're showing you the people. They showed us the people. And someone from in Waimea Homesteads took this. And there's a people right above the mountain that was forming when these things are happening. That, that's why. Now we've got to take care of our, our Kino. Now we have to take care of our Kanaka. We have to take care of our Aino. That's the most fundamental thing of as the people we know. And the last thing I want to say is a pua pua poloa. Like there's many people around the islands, and many people here. Pua poloa is another pico. Pua poloa is a pico, it's the center pico. It's this pico, it's an energetic pico of the island. You go take a look at the map. You draw a line, east, west, north, south. It goes right into pua poloa. They say pua poloa. What's happening up there, pua poloa, with the military activities and the bombing, it's, it's affecting our island. And if it affects our island, it affects us as Kanaka, and it, connect, it, it affects everybody else who lives on this island. The pico of Kuakuloa is like the pico on Oahu at Kukani Loko. If you look at Kukani Loko, that is the pico of Oahu. Kuakuloa is the pico of Hawaii Island. Why are we allowing it to happen? They can't understand this. All I can say in my closing remarks, and I apologize for taking more time, that I know there's another people waiting. Those ancestors and those kupunas who are holding that space on the Mauna and holding that space for Hapu can't continue as such. If you don't, they are like, this place is going to be, sh the mountain is going to shake, and Tutu Pele is going to be coming. Rolling and rumbling. And we don't have no princess roof to come here and stop it. So we as a people we have to be all again. Because if things shake, it's things gonna shake. But maybe the shake might not be as strong as it has to be. We just have to be all again. Things are changing, they said, things are happening, things are gonna shift and change. We as a people just have to be awakened. And so we just say, Kapiko ke aloha ke akua, mahalo nui no kui ana, alono tato, alono tato, mahalo ya to Paulo, alono.
when it comes to the TNT, you know, we made a decision several years ago by one year Manaho about wanting cocoa. Kolaho will be tasked to look at that and be back to you with an answer. Is it the, the time schedule is this week we're in the process of filing our opening briefs for the, for the third circuit court. So we look right. things are moving urgent. And as one last thing, you know, there's two pictures I gave to you. Like even though the even though the appeal hasn't even got started, they're already excavating up on a mountain. They're excavating they're, with a T9, they're ripping a road, and they're excavating a road. So they can do this geotechnical testing. And the, the appeal that hasn't even gone through yet. That's what I'm talking about. That things are happening. I, those two pictures, that's just from last week. Things are happening. And, and it's irreparable. You can't read. We, we, live on, we live on this island. You climb on D9 through the and the boy boy, you cannot, you cannot fix it back after. So things are happening and we just things are happening at an urgent pace. And we look we just look forward in whatever way possible that we can and work with this. But like I said, maybe Ms. Nagata can write a check before you guys leave and then we can see that after that. Sorry, Ms. Nagata, but Mahalo. Um, Lance Naimi is next. Hey. And after excuse me, please. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but this two gentlemen just got to sound in as a part of my heart. But I also have some very interesting information that they didn't mention. Then I, I, I thought, with your permission, for a couple of minutes, I'd like to expose that one. May I please? You know, I'm sorry, did you say yes. to speak? Thank you. My name is Mike John. <laughs> my name is Mike John, born and raised in Kyokaha. I'm an advocate of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Whether you know it or not, part of that mountain has been given to us, to the, to the Hawaiian Homes beneficiaries. Why I'm saying this is because we, the OHA beneficiaries, are the majority of the Hawaiian Homes beneficiaries. And that's why I thought it was so important that I say what I want to say. Back in, 19, in, in, in 1995, when the federal government organized a task force to come over and find out how much land the state was using without paying us, without giving us anything. So that task force came up with $600 million. Not, a, not only cash, cash and land. Part of the land they gave us was on the top of the mountain. And I have the document. I, I am probably the only guy that isn't a state employee or, or has, have anything to do with the state that has that document. I've been doing this for almost 30 years, trying to make people understand that the state doesn't have ownership of that entire mountain. We have the most important part. When I say we, I mean the beneficiaries. This land has been given to us, the beneficiaries, for one reason. One reason, the fact that the powers of the gov uh, governor and the Board of Land and Natural Resources have no powers on Hawaiian homelands, our lands. So I just want you to know that the access road from the bottom to the top comprised of 65 acres belong to us. They have built telescopes on that mountain all these years. They've been using the road to get up there to build those, and we have never been compensated. That's why, since we are all beneficiaries, as well as Hawaiian home 
beneficiaries. I just want you to get in there and do some action. We want that money that's been used that you've heard everybody talking about today, this evening, excuse me. But we haven't gotten one cent and they're talking about building a one billion dollar telescope in that mountain, and we're not even mentioned. I want you to get in there. We want you to get in there. We want the money that's supposed to come to us. It's going to come to Hawaii home, but we're all beneficiaries of both trust. So are you going to include that in all of the? the information that's been given this evening on, on that mountain. Hey, please include us. Don't leave us up. Let's shove us back in the corner. Get out there and do something for us. Thank you. We own the excess road. Everybody that uses that road is supposed to pay us for it. But everybody else is getting that, that organization that's been put together to take control of that.